Hello, I'm Ellen Swift, and I'm going to be talking about Roman bracelets. If you watch a TV programme or film set in the Roman period, you may see someone wearing a bracelet looking something like this, often worn on the upper arm. The designers probably based their ideas on Roman gold bracelets found at famous sites like Pompeii. In Roman culture, snakes were associated with healing, as this image of Mercury holding the caduceus with entwined snakes shows, and with death and rebirth. And jewellery featuring snakes was probably seen as protective. However, if you look at the archaeological record, Roman bracelets exist in a wide range of styles and materials. Materials include not only gold, but also silver, copper alloy, iron, bone, ivory, shale and jet, and glass. Copper alloy bracelets are fairly diverse, including flat strip bracelets, ones made from twisted wire, and solid cast ones. Bone and ivory bracelets tend not to survive very well in the archaeological record. They are often undecorated. Such bracelets were fastened together with iron pins or metal sleeves joining the two ends. More colourful bracelets could be made from glass. They may have been more popular in antiquity than they appear to be from the archaeological record, since many will have been melted down and recycled into other objects. Their distribution in Roman Britain is concentrated in the northeast. They are often made as plain bangles from coloured glass, but sometimes are more ornate, decorated with coloured bands of glass as cords or trails, applied as rods to the hot glass surface allowing the rods to sink into the bangle during the production process. Tatiana Ivleva at the University of Newcastle has made a study of these bangles. Materials as well as the motifs on bracelets were important in making them into lucky or protective objects. Jet, for instance, was considered to be a magical material because of its electrostatic properties. The Roman author Pliny also tells us that materials like gold were considered to have beneficial properties. So, who wore bracelets? The evidence from visual sources, for instance wall paintings, and from excavated graves, confirms that most bracelets were worn by women and by female children, although it's sometimes difficult to sex adolescent children. Also found in burials were bracelets worn as anklets, usually made of threaded glass, bone or jet beads. Barbara Burley discusses such beads in another of our films. This schematic representation shows information from Lankhill's Roman cemetery, and from it you can see that the women were recorded as wearing single bracelets, and the young girls were wearing a number on one arm. Occasionally a bracelet is found in a male grave, and there are also written sources implying that bracelets were worn by men in particular circumstances. For instance, we know that they were sometimes given in pairs as rewards to men in the army. These were called armili, and two silver examples were unearthed in a jewellery container from Colchester. Looking at the diameter of a bracelet can also be useful to gain information about the wearer. Bracelets with a very small diameter will have been worn by children, for instance. Some bracelets can be adjusted in size, so they could be given to young children and then enlarged as required as the children grew older. The terminals overlap but can be expanded to a larger size, a practice also used today. There's also evidence that sometimes adult bracelets were cut down in size to make them into children's bracelets. The most obvious examples have one intact terminal and the other has been cut off. The bracelet has then been bent round into a smaller shape, often no longer very even all the way round. Many examples from Britain that show evidence of having been cut down date to the late Roman period, and we think this kind of modification happened more often towards the end of the Roman period in Britain, when new objects were more difficult to get hold of. Sometimes a large quantity of bracelets and other jewellery is buried with female children, and it's possible that this was intended to represent the jewellery that would have been associated with a bride at her wedding. Grave contexts also provide other information about how bracelets were worn in life. 
For instance, adult women often wear a pair of identical bracelets, one on either wrist, as these gold expanding bracelets show. This dress habit emphasises the symmetry of the body, also seen in other dress items, such as pairs of earrings. Bracelets were also commonly deposited as votive offerings at religious sites, such as temples or sacred springs. Hundreds of examples have been found at individual sites, for instance at the temple site in Lydney Park, Gloucestershire. The presence of a large quantity of feminine jewellery at a site may indicate that the god in question was worshipped mainly by women, or was felt to be particularly helpful to women, for instance helping with health problems relating to childbirth, fertility or breastfeeding. How did bracelet styles change through time? In the early Roman period, bracelets made from a wide band were quite popular. They were sometimes hinged to fit around the arm closely. In the later Roman period, however, narrow strip bracelets with repeated punched motifs became much more popular and are the dominant style. They are usually fastened with a simple hook and eye catch. Some types, such as cable bracelets, appear to have been popular throughout the Roman period. A late Roman hoard of gold jewellery from Hoxon, Suffolk, contained a large assemblage of 19 bracelets, mostly in a fashionable openwork style that was popular in the late Roman period. We can also see that the stylistic changes that occur in Roman art from the early to late Roman Empire are also present in jewellery styles. Snake bracelets, for instance, were very realistic in the early Roman period, with visible detail of the scales on the body, but become increasingly stylized so that by the later Roman period they are hardly recognisable as snakes at all. This follows wider trends in Roman art in which naturalistic, realistic art fell out of fashion and was replaced by much more stylized representations. In the late Roman period, Christian themes start to appear on bracelets. For instance, representations of saints and biblical scenes such as the Annunciation. These were probably felt to be protective motifs in much the same way as the snake motif of early Roman times. If you want to learn more about Roman bracelets, this book by Catherine Johns, The Jewellery of Roman Britain, is very useful. There is also a good introduction to Roman bracelets on the webpage of archaeological consultants Barbican Research Associates.